So I'm going to do a full walk around of uh, this collection that I'm selling on behalf of somebody. And I'll show you my garage as well, which has got some of my own stuff. So, Colnago Master with the full C record and Delta Calipers. Crimped tubing, so it's kind of like profiled. It's a nice one. Uh, Sonic, it's our Italian brand. Really nice quality. And it's got the Campagnolo 50th group set, which for all you vintage people will know that's uh, pretty hard to come by and expensive. Aero levers, um, that's nice. Uh, Colnago Futura Tribute, so the original ones of these, I think there was around 32 painted and they're worth, you know, like over £10,000 or $15,000 or whatever. Absolutely mint. Full record. Concorde, Time Trial, Pursuit. Full duty ace. We've got a lot to go. <laughs> a couple Allen frames, they're some of the earliest aluminium frames that you could buy. Maybe late 70s, I think. Um, super light, absolutely bonkers. Um, Colnago Pista, Full C Record, the Sheriff Star Hubs. Sorry about the wind as well, it's a windy day today. This is a uh, ex Italian national team track bike, piece of Pista bike, again, Full C Record. And this is a, a rarer tube set, it's called the a ESA Tubin. So it has six profiled crimps um, versus I think it's five was the normal Higgins tricycle this will be a nightmare to to sell because pretty impossible to ship them I might just keep that for myself we'll, we'll see uh, Bob Jackson trap bike but this possibly could have belonged to Chris Boardman. Um, it was bought off a guy who's a member of the Manchester Wheelers, which is a huge uh, cycling group down in England, or in Manchester, and, and Boardman was a member of them for quite some time, so I sent him a message, and I'm hoping to hear back. He's got 200,000 followers, so he might... Uh, you might not see my message. 753 tubing, really high end steel. Uh, you have to braze it using like a silver brazen, I'm pretty sure. Denton's just a, an English brand, I'm pretty sure. This is a lovely frame. Fondriest alloy carbon mix. The pretty cool paint. Again, it's, it's mint. I think it's possibly been built, but it's not seen any use. In fact, it's not been built. Look at that steerer. <laughs> so it's new. Uh, Trek USPS. I think Lance Armstrong rode one of these back in the day. Pretty famous. Uh, Krusty Colnago. Still nice frame. Massey time trial bike. Another Allen. A Boschetti, if I'm saying that right. Uh, the collector that I'm selling all these bikes for, this was his winter bike, so he's, he's put a lot of miles on this. And you can see that. 
compared to the rest, which are, you know, show bikes. Uh, this is one of my bikes, a 1960-62 Ginelli Super Corsa. It's just a powder coat finish, it's uh, not any fancy enamel, but we've got the original head badge and most of the parts are period correct. Uh, the rims are made by Beretta, which is the gun company based in Italy. MKM sort of track pursuit bike. It's got a really weird geometry, uh, really short, short wheelbase. Some weird hipster mercs. A bit out of place in this collection, I think. That's another one of mine, uh, Colnago Super. It's fully refinished, free, resprayed. Campad Chorus Group set, 8 speed. Uh, one more of my bikes as well, Losa. Uh, a lot of people haven't heard of Losa, but he was a one of the Italy's master builders. He, he built the Cinelli Super Corsa range during the 80s, I think. Uh, so he did build a few bikes under his own sort of brand name, but not, not that many of them. Right, this is a pretty historically significant bike right here. This was the first sort of modern geometry bike that had a sloping top tube. So before this design, there there would have to be like 10, 15 jigs for each size. You know, it would go up in like one centimeter increments, or you know, half an inch or whatever for your Americans. Uh, and Mike Burrows, who designed this and designed these crazy carbon smoke wheels, he came up with the slope and top tube, and that allowed to the manufacturing to go down to like four or five um, jigs or basic sizes, you know, like small, medium, large, extra large, and then it allow for a, your adjustment in the seat post, which by the way, this one is too big for this particular bike. Uh, but yeah, they're this first generation TCR, they're really hard to find and yeah, historically significant in the history of, of bicycles, basically. Kirk Revolution, or sorry, Kirk Precision, this one is. But this is from the first generation, I think there was 200 made. Uh, they were really prone to cracking down here. This is cast magnesium, so it's pretty heavy, but it's lighter than you would uh, you'd expect, to be honest. So that's a funky bike. Uh, they also made mountain bikes as well. More modern. I'm not quite familiar with this brand, but uh, Cornello, maybe Columbus SL Tubin, maybe X Pro with a tag number, race tag number. Uh, this is a rally titanium frame, but it's a prototype. It's one of the, the few that were. Oh, I can't remember the exact details, but it's the uh, serial number identified it, and I, I have one of the X um, Rally MDs on my Facebook who I've been speaking to, and uh, yeah, he says this is like a pre-production version of their titanium uh, frame. I've got the card. Super rare look, um, aero frame. Another low pro sort of pursuit frame set, which there's quite a lot of. This guy's got a real thing for them. Bonotto, but this was an Italian made one before they moved production to Mexico, I'm pretty sure.
another Somek. Lovely paint, but it's a little bit faded. Gelanio. This is a beauty. Proper track frame, no, no holes for the, the brake mounting. Fondriest alloy carbon. That's got really nice paint and mint as well. It kind of reminds me of the Colnago Dream frame set, which was kind of had similar alloy tubes like this. Absolutely mint restored Colnago. Forget the model, but I think it's a super actually. Looking at these lugs. I guess we can go for a little tour of the garage. Got a whole load of crusty frames up here, a few nice bits and bobs mixed around, but nothing like what we've just looked at out here. Disc wheels, Campab Ghibli, so these are made with uh, Kevlar strips and it's like a drum. It's unbelievably fragile, um, you can probably see the flex in the reflection maybe. Mavic Comet, this was ridden by a, a pro, I can't remember his name at the moment. Mint. Specialised tri-spoke. Our head disc, carbon. whole load of steel forks <laughs> and it's like old, it's more like 1950s parts that are in the shelves and then the boxes start to weigh like these are old uh, handlebar mounted water bottle holders Two tandems hang hanging up here. There's a bunch of wheels and stuff. Got three tandems in here, which is a bit ridiculous to know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a literally around. I don't know, possibly a ton worth of bike magazines that came from another collector a few years ago that had passed away and I, I was selling off that collection but there's just so much volume of stuff here that it's it's a bit overwhelming um, yeah, I mean that's 1990 but it goes all the way back to I've had some stuff from the 1800s but that sells pretty well uh, I don't know maybe there must be at least 50 pairs of wheels lying around. You know, I've got a shed as well that's stacked. This is a really early derailleur. It's a bit dark, but the tension is on the front. It's like spring-loaded, and then this would kind of move back to front and change the gear. So. Pretty sure that's like early 40s, possibly even the 1930s. Uh, super early. More random forks, some mountain bike forks. We're kind of getting there. <laughs> Can have a little glance into the shed, and then I'll 
I'll call it quits. There's stuff stacked everywhere. Old Klein mountain bike. This isn't actually a fancy Klein. Um, if anyone knows the brand, then uh, you'll know what they can be like. And if anyone doesn't know Klein, you should check them out because the paint jobs were just amazing and the, the frames themselves were way ahead of their time for like the, the 80s and early 90s. Old Hetchins, um, you see it's kind of got like curvy tubes and wavy chainstays. So that's because in early days of racing in Britain you weren't actually allowed to advertise the um, the manufacturer's name on the bike anywhere for some reason so the Brits started coming up with like various frame design that you could recognize in photos without you know any actual worded branding anywhere uh, they make some stunning bikes um, like really really fancy fancy logs which is this sort of stuff looks here. This is quite a nice one actually as well. A bit crusty but really high quality for the day. Anyway, that's us. Ridiculous. I probably won't have a garden filled with bikes like this ever again.